Welcome to the second video in our Guardian Healthcare Education Series. My name is Michelle Snyders, and I'm a social worker with the South Dakota Association for Healthcare Organizations. Thank you for your dedication to helping someone live their best life possible. Guardianship comes with many rewards. It also has many responsibilities. This video is designed to highlight Guardian's responsibilities around the protected person's health care. We will focus on three important responsibilities. Number one, maintaining contact with the protected person and his or her health care team. Number two, knowing who is providing care to your protected person. And number three, participating in care decisions for your protected person. The first responsibility we're focusing on is the need to stay in contact with the protected person and the healthcare team. What do we mean by stay in contact? Make sure you talk and interact with the protected person. As a guardian, you are responsible to act in the protected person's best interest. So talk to him about his interests, needs, values, and preferences. You can ask him how he is feeling or if he has any worries about his health. Another question might be what his health would look like if it were different than it is now. Then talk about actions that can be taken to improve his health. Does he have access to healthy food and regular exercise? Ask him if he has any religious or spiritual beliefs that may affect the care he would want. If your protected person has difficulty communicating, check in with others caring for him, such as the staff at the nursing facility or assisted living facility. Be cautious about who you share information with, though. As guardian, you have knowledge to intimate and confidential information about your protected person. Health information is part of that confidential information. Be sure not to share your protected person's confidential information with those outside of his health care team unless they are authorized to receive it. Ensure that any healthcare provider caring for the protected person has your most up-to-date contact information so you can be easily reached. Healthcare providers may communicate with you by phone, text, email, or mail. Be sure to let them know your preferred method of communication. Healthcare providers may work in a clinic, hospital, or other care facility. You may work with one or more of them in one or more locations. Be sure each location has your up-to-date information. Respond to the healthcare team as soon as possible. Healthcare decisions can often be urgent and sometimes emergent. Healthcare providers have certain obligations to provide emergency care if they cannot reach you. To make sure the care received is the care wanted, quick responses are crucial. The second responsibility focus, knowing who the healthcare team members are that may be caring for your protected person with whom you will have contact. Let's look at some potential team members and what they may do to care for your protected person. The primary care physician, or the PCP, their role is to oversee the big picture for the protected person. They will make referrals to other professionals as needed to address any specific specialized needs of your protected person. Physician specialists, they generally focus on specific parts of the body, like a lung doctor, also known as a pulmonologist or they may focus on specific diseases, like a cancer doctor, also known as an oncologist. Nurses work closely with physicians. They often provide the direct care decided by you, the protected person, and the physician. Examples of their care might include giving an IV antibiotic or calling in a prescription the doctor ordered. Social workers help you find resources and support for the protected person's needs, like finding help for food, insurance, emotional support, and other necessities. Case managers. They are often nurses or social workers. They coordinate care between different places to make sure each person involved with your protected person stays up to date. They help with scheduling appointments and lining up services. Pharmacists work with the physician to help decide on the best medication for an illness their correct dose, and look for interactions between other medications taken by your protected person. Chaplains provide spiritual care and support for your protected person. Therapists help with the recovery and improvement in daily activities. There may be several different types of therapists involved in the care of the person. A physical therapist helps develop exercise plans for improving strength and endurance. 
An occupational therapist develops exercises for improving and accomplishing daily routines and can assess one's ability to drive. A speech therapist tests someone's ability to understand things and makes sure there are no concerns with swallowing. A respiratory therapist helps with breathing exercises and oxygen needs. These team members may provide care in a home, clinic, hospital, or care facility. You may work with one or more of these healthcare professionals. The third responsibility we were focusing on is actively participating in care decisions. This is easily accomplished by three things. First, attend appointments whenever possible. You are needed at these appointments to act on behalf of the protected person. It is important to be present to ask questions, get information, interact with your protected person, and see his response to conversations. The knowledge you gain from attending the appointment is the informed and informed consent. Your informed consent is needed to proceed with medical interventions. This consent is given in writing, so attending the appointment makes it possible for you to sign the authorization form. It is always best to be present in person when possible, but with today's technology, if you live a distance from the protected person or are unable to attend for a valid reason, you can also be present virtually or by phone. When necessary, and after the virtual or phone discussion, consents can be signed by witnesses to your verbal consent. The second way to actively participate in your protected person's care is attend care conferences. A care conference is a meeting with everyone involved in your protected person's health care. They often take place in a nursing facility, assisted living, or during a hospital stay. Like appointments, attending in person is preferred, but you may also be able to attend the care conference by phone or virtually through technology if you cannot be present in person. Finally, visit with the protected person's primary care physician at least annually to get an update on his health condition and identify any worries or concerns the PCP has and or discuss interventions that may be needed in the future. Doing these things will help you write your annual report to the court as well as make informed decisions. The PCP is the best contact for healthcare questions or concerns you may have as a guardian. There is a printable healthcare provider checklist located on this website for you to use. Thank you for viewing this education and be sure to look for more healthcare education videos to help you in your role as guardian.